Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today which is a technique for finishing off like nose cones or other forms where you've got like a maybe a cylindrical or a elliptical form and you want to cap it smoothly and have control over those forms. This technique is similar to a video which I produced four or five years ago, which is this one here, which uh, also was like a nose cone and how to finish that form off. Uh, except that didn't really go into detail with having like much more form and uh and behind this this sort of nose cone area so i found it was probably actually a bit lacking in information so i've seen quite a few videos recently where people were asking how to finish off like a wing tip or a or a nose cone sort of thing like this so i thought i'm going to redo this video so this video now has like a main form here as well uh as well as this piece which is sort of captured in that other video so the technique's similar. I'm just going to run through this. If I jump over to this file here, so I've got a like a section set up. So my main section here, which if I have a look at that, so I've got a degree degree three style spline four CVs set up horizontal to the center line. So when I mirror this across, it will be tangent. And I've just got a few dimensions here to control some of the some of the form and then that's extruded back and after that I have a side profile so the side profile is set up as a degree 6 um, style spline so it's got 7 CVs we've got curvature continuous constraint on each end which means the first 1, 2, 3 CVs on each end are um, controlled by that constraint so I've had another point here another CV which I can control um, to kind of change the the pointiness okay and the next thing I have is a plan control which is again set up in a similar fashion to the uh, side elevation control except in this case it's a degree 4 style spline so the first one, two, three CVs are controlled by the curvature continuous constraint, which is constrained to a uh, an intersection curve created through the extrude, and then on the other end, we're normal to the uh, mirror plane. So when that mirrors over, that will be curvature continuous because that's matching the same curvature on the other side when it gets mirrored. That's why you need to have tangent there. If you made that curvature continuous, it would probably end up being quite flat here. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm probably saying, well, we could just build that out of a fill surface. I use Instant 3D quite a lot, and with a fill surface, Instant 3D doesn't really bring up all of the uh, input sketches and constraints, uh, or the constraint curves for editing. So I find it much better to use boundary surfaces, etc., if you're actually going to use Instant 3D to edit your forms. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is we're going to build a four-sided surface in here and two of those boundaries are going to actually be out of the same sketch and SOLIDWORKS won't let me do that so I actually have to convert entities so we'll go into our right plane and we'll pick that sketch convert entities and then I'm just going to draw a center line across here and split so sketch tools Split entities, we're just going to split this entity and then use trim. Could use power trim, but oh no, it's working this time. I was trying to earlier and uh, it was losing, it was turning to blue, it was losing the uh, convert entities constraint. That's why I put the split on. Okay, anyway, so we've got our two sides there. So we'll just hide this, uh, the base curve here. So now we've got one, two, three profiles in the first direction and one, two in the second. Okay. So insert surface, boundary surface, that brings up selection manager because we've got two entities that aren't connected in that sketch, so we'll pick that edge, then right click selection manager, because I want to pick this one here, but I want to pull that end point back and then wait until a dot appears, which means it's clipped onto that reference, and then our other profile there. Okay, now in the second direction, we're going to pick that sketch. And if I turn off my curves, 
for sketches, we're just going to pick this edge here. For tangency, uh, tangent to this edge, so tangent to face here, and then our first and last profiles in the second direction, we're going to go, um, I'm going to go direction vector rather than normal profile. I just prefer it. Um, okay. And right plane. And last thing I'm going to do is on this boundary here, I'm going to make our tangent influence 100%. Because without that, if we turn our zebras on, we'll probably end up with a little kink here. Okay. Right, so now I've got that, we can bring up the nose profile. So you'd be going, okay, well, why can't you just kick that out with a, a, a boundary surface with two profiles? I'll show you what happened. Like that. So what happens is we have a thing called a singularity or a collapsed edge um, because a boundary surface is actually a four-sided surface so we've only got two edges so these points on the end here are actually where the edges is collapsed into a singularity so all the cvs all the points that would define those second direction um, edges are collapsed in on themselves into points Okay, so you might think, oh yeah, that's okay. Well, there's a few reasons why it's not okay. Like you can see there, the curvature's gone down to zero. Um, you can have issues controlling um, forms when you have singularities like that. And also, you can have issues when you try offsetting. Like, What's that? That's our little edge there, so that's actually coming out. So that's unexpanding out of its singularity. Okay, I'm not necessarily getting failures here, but I have seen people get failures before in the past where you've got four-sided surface that's actually only got two edges, okay? So I'll just show you this technique, which is basically you trim back. trim back the surface here to give us a resultant four-sided surface. So what I'm going to do, on my right plane, I go in there and sketch. I'm going to create a, a section here which cuts out or trims the end of this boundary surface. So I'm going to add two straight segments and then an arc. And with that arc, I'm going to Make the center point coincident to a top plane. Make the two line segments equal in length. Um, give those a length. And then a dimension. Okay, so with that sketch, eggs of that sketch, turn off my planes, I'm going to pick that sketch, I'm going to go insert surface trim and remove that. So now you can see what's going on. We now have one, two, three, four boundaries. So we can add a four sided surface in there with no singularities. So I'm just going to push my shortcut, B for boundary, and going to use the selection manager. Okay, so there's nothing there for that selection manager for me to shorten that section. It can't clip onto a reference. So what I'll do quickly is on the top plane, we'll just go in there and I'll add a point. and make a pierce point relationship with this edge here. Okay, so now when I go into my boundary surface, I can go one, right click, select manager, and we can shorten that up and see the dots appeared. That means it's clipped onto that point we just added. 
and third and in the second direction one and again select some selection manager and shorten that up like that next thing to do is to define our tangencies so all the edges we're going to use tangent face Okay, and our center line here, I'm going to use direction vector again, so we use right, and then go OK. And I'm just going to check this. Okay, what do we notice? Okay, there's a kink. See, there's some wobbles at the boundaries. So what we need to do is go back in there and define our tangent influence. So there's two side edges. If we crank that up to 100%, Go OK, and now we'll have a look with the zebra. OK, so it's uh, made the surface much fuller here. It's taking uh, much more influence out of the curvature of the uh, input or the reference surface. Now we can knit that all together. Insert surface knit. Um, I've got a shortcut. Go OK, and then mirror it across. So we're mirroring the body, body to mirror. And then again knit that. Okay, so if we turn off our edges and have a quick look with the zebra. So there we go. So that's a way of capping off a like a cylindrical or a you know like a, a manipulated cylinder uh, in form. Other things you can do, like this should be robust enough. If we use instance 3D here, if we change our So we can make it wider. Okay, so that's updating. Um, what else can we do? Let's change that back to 40. Change our angle here. Okay, so that's updating. I believe I added, no I didn't. Okay, we go back into this first uh, extrusion here and add some draft to it, some taper, so 5 degrees, oh, so you can see there we've got a crease there, so I suspect one of my sections hasn't updated, ah yeah, there we go, so we're just going to this section here, and equal curvature, and you can see what's happened there is when you add equal curvature and you have both the CVs already dimensioned, it, it adds, adds another CV in here, so we don't want that. So you just pick that CV and hit delete, then hit build. Okay, so now that's updated. So now we've got taper on the form, so it's looking much more like a nose cone. Um, let's see how far we can get that taper to go. Yeah. So it will fall over, um, and of course if you make changes like this, you probably also want to go and change like this section here. Because if I go and turn on my curvature combs for that plan view uh, section, you can see there it's kind of dipping around and then curving in again. So we might want to adjust some of the sections, make it a bit, whoops, we go back again. So we want the end of this curvature comb to look like it's uh, perpendicular to the midplane, like that. Let's have a look with our zebras on. Okay, so there's a few wibbles and wobbles in there, but as I said, I just made a gross, like a big change to the form. So uh, in reality, you're always going to have to go in and tweak things afterwards. But generally, this is um, quite a robust uh, technique for capping off forms, anything like this, use it on buttons and all other sorts of other things. Anyway, I'm going to wrap that up there. I will put both, actually I'll just put this file here, I'll post this uh, in the description so you can download it and pick it apart. It's got everything in there, it's got the draft in there as well. So yeah, have a look. Thanks for watching, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.